Class uh, 171 on the Golden Doves are on page 185 in footnote 83 in the middle of the first paragraph where um, my father writes that Taneh and Matne refer to two different levels of study. So there's Taneh, which means recounting, chanting, or plain oral recitation, whether it's Tanaitic or not. Um, and there's Sefer HaSholashim. According to some, this term is biblical. Um, right. So let's look at Sefer HaSholashim. It says on uh, the, the the verb is Taf Nun He. Uh, okay, so here's a, the, the, the Pasuk says in Shofetim, Sham Yetanu Sitkot Adonai. That's in the fifth chapter of uh, Shofetim. That's in Shirat Devora. Mikol Mechasesim Ben Mashabim. Right? Um, the sounds of the uh, people holding the bow and arrow, the archers, right? Ben Mashabim. Um, and they're where the, the places of water are. Sham Yetanu Sidkot Adonai. So in those places, let them state or chant or recite the the um sedek of god right sidkot pirzono be israel how god sedek led to the deliverance or the redemption of israel right so that's sham yetanu very interesting so so sham yetanu sidkot adonai going back now to the radar who brings that pasuk um Okay, so Sham Yetanu Sitkot Adonai, Radak says on the word Yetanu Ya'anu, Vida Beru, Veyoru Hasitkot Asali Israel. Right? Um, so Yetanu is related to the Aramaic um, Tane. Right? Tane means to recite. Now, here it's not a Beraita. My father said it doesn't have to be a Tanaitic material. Right? Also, Ladakh brings Veshinantam Lebanecha, the Targum on Veshinantam Lebanecha is Wut Tan Nun. Again, so when you recite it to your children, that's Tane, your Shone. Right? Targum Ve Aneta Shamma Kime Neureha Beit Nehon Taman. Okay, so you see how the, the verb Tane is based, or the Aramaic, Taneh, which means to recite, doesn't have to be Tanaitic material, is based on the Hebrew Taf Nun He, which is used, um, again, the best example is Sham Yetanu Sidkot Adonai. That's beautiful. What, uh, but then there's Matneh. Matneh means to teach. Right? Refers to a more intensive level of study dealing with the comprehension of material, whether one is actually teaching it or not. So matzene means a deeper level of study where you're trying to understand the material. You can be teaching it to somebody else, but not necessarily. So this is somehow analogous to girsa, where in girsa you're just tane, you're reciting. And then there's gamir, where you're understanding what you're reciting. That's the second level, which is analogous to matne. Um, look at the Chot Avelut of Rambam, Perek Yod Daled. Uh, okay, Perek Yod Daled, Rambam. Give me a moment, I'm just finding it. Um, 
Mishnah Torah. Sorry, it's taking a little longer than I would like. I know that uh, this uh, pause is wasteful, but I did find it here. And I think it's worth the effort that we're making to study this more carefully. So if you look at Perak Yod Aleph, Halacha Yod Aleph. Halacha Yod Aleph says as follows. Talmid Hacham Shemet Afilu Hayu Immo Achishim Rubo Mevatelin Talmud Torah Lehosa Ato Hayu Shishim Ribo En Mevatelin Ve'im Ayam Elamed La'acherim En Lo Shiur Elam Mevatelin Akoles Lehosa Ato So you see Arambam here it's, it's structurally the same that the, there's a difference between Tamir Chacham who studies Torah and knows Torah and then Tamir Chacham who teaches Torah then in the case where he teaches Torah even above 60,000 um, 600, somebody would still make Bitul Torah if he's standing he would go join the Levaya uh, to show him the proper honors so again similar um, idea Tane versus Matne. Girsa versus Gamir. All right, just put on my glasses because the letters in the footnote are getting a little small. Okay. Therefore, some identified it with Shema'ata, meaning they identified Matne with Shema'ata. Okay. Um. Okay, since the sense of the riddle could be unraveled only by a Talmudic scholar, it could not offend the sensibilities of the uninitiated. You remember we said there was a Talmudic riddle. We said one, and this is in Masechet Megillah, Kaf Hayat Amud Bet. I'm going to go to the Gemara now. Right, we said that you're allowed to Use someone who's matne, who's um, one second. Well, let me find the Gemara. Here it is. This is Masechet Megillah, Kaf Hayat, Amud Bet. Okay. All right, so the, the Mishnah says, Ud ishtamish betaga halef, right? Um, that's a Mishnah in Masechet Pirkei Avot. If you use the uh, the crown of the Torah, the person who uses the crown of the Torah, halef. Zeh mishtamish bemish sheshone halachot ki Torah shel Torah. This refers to somebody who uses another who knows halachot by heart. Because a person who knows halachot by heart, that's the ketel, that's the crown of the Torah. So you're not allowed to use uh, that individual. But then Ullah says, Ullah makes a, um, a more refined um, explanation. Unlike Lesh Lakish, who says, Zeh mishtamesh b'mish yashon halachot kitraha shel Torah, Ullah says, Lishtamish inish b'man detani arba, you are allowed to use someone who knows the four collections by heart. You're not allowed to use somebody. Let's say somebody, give me a cup of water. So a person who knows the four collections by heart, you can, can you give me a cup of water, please? But you're not allowed, if somebody is then no, you can't say, give me a cup of water, right? And then it brings up the story of Resh Lakish. So let's read it actually. This is a nice thing. But Amar Ullah. So that, this is this is the point. Ullah says as follows: Mishta mesh inish bemande tani arba'a bela mishta mesh bemande matni arba'a. You're allowed to use somebody who knows the four collections by heart. Tane, you see the word tane, but you're not allowed to use somebody who's matni arba'a. That's a higher level. Meshakish was walking, trying to get to his destination. There was um, a um, like a like a like a rivulet, 
right? He, he needed to pass the rivulet or the river, and he was in a situation where if he would have passed the river, he would, of course, um, get wet. All right. It wasn't really a river. I think, you know, like in Israel, I remember when it used to rain a lot, so you go to the field and you have these like big puddles of water. That's really what this is. This isn't a river, right? So he needed to pass it. There was a big puddle of water and it gets all muddy. So somebody saw Rishakish standing there and he gave Rishakish a piggyback, right? So he won't have to give himself money. And he's walking with Rishakish on his shoulders and taking him to the other side. Amale Karet. So he says, uh, tell me, Rosh I was answering the person carrying him, did you, you know how to read the Torah? Ta'amim? Amale Karet, yes. So it's a certain level of knowledge. Tanet, do you know to recite by heart? Tanen al de Mishnah. He says, yes, I, I'm Tanet, meaning I recite by heart for Sedarim of the Mishnah. He says, you chiseled for yourself, almost like chiseling from the mountain, because it says, right? So it's a, it's a figurative, poetic way of speaking. The Hachamim would say, you chiseled, so to speak, from the mountain, um, um, the, the, the four, the, the four sedarim, or you chiseled four mountains, right? Each, each said there is a mountain, so you chiseled for yourself, for yourself four mountains. And you're carrying Lesh Lakish, I shouldn't be doing this to you. It's you're, you, you have a, a high level and I'm not worthy. Throw me into the water, says Lesh Lakish. Um, so the person who's carrying Lesh Lakish says, But I want to serve you. Sir, Lemor, sir. So, so Lesh Lakish accedes. He says, okay. He says, let me teach you something, because if I teach you something, then you have to show me special respect as your teacher. Right? So, So he teaches them the halakha. Now from here we see that lishtamish inish beman detani arba'a he was able to use him. Eshakish was able to use the services of this person. But if he would have been matne arba, he would not have used him. Right? So that's the riddle. So getting back now to the text and the footnote. Since the sense of the riddle could be unraveled only by a Talmudic scholar, it could not offend the sensibilities of an uninitiated. Only a person who's matne arba'a would know the difference between matne and tane. And therefore, a person who's only tane arba'a would not be offended that we're saying that we can use him, the person who's only tane, because he wouldn't necessarily know what matne means. Because if you knew it, then he would also be matne himself. <laughs> That's a sharp point. The Gaonim have preserved this riddle in a different version, but the sense is the same. In a Gaonic responsum, the following version is quoted. One may use an individual who teaches matne arba'a, but one may not use an individual who recites tane arba'a. Interesting, the opposite in this particular she'el al the Gaonim. As is evident from the response itself, this means that one who only knows how to recite but does not understand four orders of the Mishnah is preferable to one who actually understands four orders of the Mishnah. Uh, um, uh, uh, to one who, uh, is preferable, I'm sorry, to one who actually teaches, that is, understands four unauthorized collections of the oral law. So the riddle was a little different than the Gaonim. How can, how can the Gaonim say that one who's Tane is better than one who's Mate? That doesn't make sense. But no. One who's Tane for authorized collections is better than one who's Matne, he understands and teaches and knows for unauthorized collections, because if you know the unauthorized collections, how does it give an example? A person knows the Midrash al Khuma and he teaches the Midrash al Khuma. That's Torah, of course, so he gets Zachar for Talmud Torah, but that's not an authorized collection. So his Madriga would not be as high as someone who knows four authorized collections, even though he just knows it by Alpe. He's only Tane, right? And yet he's higher than one who's Matne for unauthorized collections.
But that's very sharp. That's a very sharp point. Epstein, Alava Shalom, great to meet Chacham, of course, but we could disagree with people and 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 not uh, be disrespectful, of course. Epstein misunderstood the sense of this response, and therefore concluded that Tane refers only to Tanaitic material, whereas for Talmudic material, only Matane is used. So for Epstein, Tane refers to Mishnayot, but then we made the distinction that Epstein makes between the word Tane, which we said means to recite, and Matane, which we said means to explain, to teach, to understand. Epstein says Tane refers to Tanaitic material, and Matne refers to later material. Actually, Matne could apply to Talmudic material or an unauthorized work, right? Because as we said, all Matne means is that you understand it well and you teach it and you can explain it. That doesn't mean it excludes Talmudic material, it doesn't exclude non-Talmudic. It could be any material, it could be Gemara, could be Midrash, could be Midrash Shem Chuma, could be Derech uh, Erez Zutam, right, Tanak Ve'eliyahu, right, those are non-authorized collections. For example, if, okay, significantly, Tanuye, the infinitive form of Tane, implies familiarity with rabbinic literature in general, as in the expression Karaye ve tanuye, designating knowledge of biblical and rabbinic literature. It's interesting. Karaye means he knows how to read. He is he who reads. Ve tanuye, he who knows Tanaitic material, rabbinic literature. All right. It is used for the recitation of Madrish, Madrishic, Madrashic, sorry, <laughs> literature. See Berachot 11b. The correct version is cited and analyzed in Bet Natan. It is, so let's just look at that and then we'll finish this uh, class. So I'm going to open up now Berachot Yod Aleph Amud Bet. Here goes. Berachot Yod Aleph Amud Bet. This is at the, almost at the end of Perek Memotah Kurin Shema Ve'arvid. And we are looking for the word Matne. Um, okay. Here it is. The Amar of Chiyab HaRasheh, Zimnin Sagi'in. Many times, says Rav Chiyav Rashi, Hava ka'imna kameh derav letanuye pirkin. Look, it says letanuye. Many times I would be in the presence of Rav for the purpose of tanuye pirkin, the sifra de verav, where I would be learning tanuye, learning to recite the halachot or the pirkin, the paragraphs of uh, Sifra de Verab, right? Sifra, interesting. So you, that's a pretty good thing to study Sifra with Rav, who was the author of the Sifra. I like that. <laughs> Again, the Amar Piyam Rashi, Zimin Sagi in Avaka Ima, Kame de Rav, Letanuye Pirkim be Sifra de Verab. So you want to know what the correct version is? Go to the author. Hava Makdim ve Kamashe Aden. We would first do Nitilak Alain. Before you study Torah, you're supposed to do Nitilak Alain. Yeah. And then he would, they would study. So, getting back to the footnote, my father, it is used for the recitation of Midrash, Midrashic literature. Tanuye. This refers to Midrashic literature. Now, you remember that Epstein said that Tanuye would be for the earlier Mishnah, and Matzne would be for, let's say, Midrashic literature. But here you say Tanuye, right? So that's. Um, a proof right there. It is also used for the recitation of Talmud. Um, let's look at um, okay, that's it. We'll stop here.